welcome to Cook 30. I'm Jeremy Dixon from the Revive Cafes in Auckland, New Zealand, and also wrote the Revive Cafe cookbooks. And today I'm excited to be able to share with you some delicious cafe style meals that you can cook at home. Cook 30 food is all about using whole grains, plant-based proteins, delicious fruit and vegetables, and wrapping them all up with international flavors and herbs and spices. And the best part, you don't have to spend hours in the kitchen. I'm gonna show you how you can make a delicious meal for your family in just 30 minutes. On the menu today we have an Indonesian Saya Loda tofu curry. We're gonna be serving it on this fresh cauliflower couscous with a rocket almond and fig salad. And to finish, a wonderful sweet peach and blueberry crumble. So preparing meals in a short time doesn't happen by accident. You wanna make sure everything's well prepared. Your bench is all clear and clean. We've got the ingredients out we need, food processor ready, boiled water in the jug, pots and pans on the stove, and our oven is preheated to 350 Fahrenheit, which is about 180 Celsius. And we've got a chopping board and a sharp knife, great attitude and ready to cook. So we wanna start with the things that are gonna take the longest. So we've got a really um, nice curry, and one of the great ingredients in this curry is, is pumpkin or butternut, which really kind of melts and gives it a nice flavor. So we're gonna start by getting this underway. I've got a butternut pumpkin here. This half has seeds in it, so we're gonna put this away and use it for something else later. And we're gonna use this end here, just for ease of cooking. So we're just gonna put it into cubes, and we're gonna make these relatively small, so they cook quickly. Um, probably around about a centimetre or a half an inch thick. And um, we're just going to roast these. So just um, cut them into rings like this. And uh, into, into little dices. I'm going to put some baking paper or parchment paper on the oven tray. And this will just really help with clean up later and just helps things not sticking to the, um, the tray as well. So put that there, put these guys on. Doesn't have to match exactly with the tray. And cut these ones up as well. Now you've noticed I haven't actually peeled this, this pumpkin or butternut. Um, the skin gets relatively soft when it's cooked. Um, it saves us time and it's full of nutrients. So I'm not a big fan of unnecessarily peeling or taking the skin off vegetables. So the last lot here. So when you're chopping, try to economise on all your cuts. And obviously you'll need a nice sharp knife to be able to be doing these kind of cuts. And usually it stays together and behaves like that. There we go. So I'm just going to spray a little bit of um, olive oil, cooking oil on it. This is just a great quick way of getting some oil on without putting huge amounts of volume on. So just a, a little spray. That's probably the equivalent of a, a couple of teaspoons. You don't need to over spray it or deep fry it. And that'll take around about probably 15 to 20 minutes-ish to kind of get nice and soft so we can put it in the curry. Speaking of which, you better start that. So I've got a pan here on the stove. You can use any pot or anything you want, but I like these kind of nice low dish kind of a style cast iron pans because they present really well. You can cook in it and you can use it on the table as well, which saves dishes and a lot of time. So first ingredient for any curry is an onion. Got this massive onion here. Check out this one, it's massive. So we'll cut this, and the good news is it takes about the same time to cut up a big onion as it does a small onion. So in my cafes, we actually always specify large onions because um, there's a lot less prep involved to get the same amount of diced onion. So I'm just gonna slice these up. This is a good quick way. There are more chefy ways of doing no um, onions, but I find this one just to be the simplest one. Cut through here. Doesn't have to be exact or perfect. I'm just going to put a little bit of oil in the pan, just a couple of teaspoons, nothing too drenching it, and we'll just get that underway. Nothing like that sizzle of some onions in a pan to kind of let you know the meal is underway. So we'll get that off and in there. So the next ingredients we're going to do is we're going to add some. Ginger, which goes very well, so two tablespoons of ginger. One and two. And you can use fresh ginger if you want, but I find these little tubes of ginger quite adequate. 
And we've got some lemongrass paste, which is really nice as well. Again, you could just buy some lemongrass from the from the um, from, from an Asian shop or perhaps your supermarket. But these pastes are really good as well. So ginger and lemongrass give this dish a really kind of the nicest, beautiful flavors of Asia come out. Some garlic, of course. So we'll go with around about two large cloves. So I've kind of got five baby cloves here. The easiest way to do garlic is just get your garlic press, put it in the press and just squeeze it through. You need a really good quality garlic press to do this. And we'll just scrape that in. Give it a stir around. Whoa, those are strong onions. If I start crying, you know why. I'll keep away from these guys. So this just gives a really nice depth of kind of a base of flavor um, that'll really kind of work well with the dish. And I, this is a typical start to many of my dishes in our cafe. Each day we have what we call a, two hot pots on the menu, which are big kind of pots full of one dish um, stews or curries or that type of thing. And they always usually start off with a kind of a mix like this with onions and garlic and ginger. So we'll leave that going, he's going well. And now we're gonna do the um, dessert. That's gonna take around about 15, 20 minutes. And this is really delicious. So we're gonna do, a, we've got peaches, canned peaches and some apple sauce. Um, you could use um, pureed apples, if, well this is basically pureed apples, but any kind of soft apple that comes in a can depending what's around. So we're just gonna drain these two cans of peaches. You could use um, um, frozen peaches if you had them as well. So let's just drain them. Get any excess moisture, any water out. Actually not too much in these ones. I'm gonna pour them in the bottom of this dish. And this crumble is just so easy. I mean, some people call these cobblers or crisps. Crumble, they're kind of all the same thing. A little bit of moisture. I'm gonna add some frozen blueberries. This gives it a lovely color. So around about that many blueberries. What's that, probably around about two cups. This one tried to escape. Now we'll drizzle this apple sauce over the top. This is just a good alternative to using um, canned apples because it's all soft and it can just it cooks really quickly. Whereas if you use whole apples, it can sometimes take sometimes take quite a while to cook. So it's just a nice, quick kind of alternative. So we'll just kind of give it a little kind of seep through there, soak through, and to finish it off, some uh, nice get some kind of natural granola or muesli, preferably one that's not too kind of highly sugared. Um, so there are some good ones around. So I'll just pour it over the top, cover everything nice and evenly. Although it's, keep things rustic, it doesn't have to be exactly perfectly level. Um, so we'll just, there we go, probably around about, about about three cups. No, use a whole lot. There we go. I'm just gonna spray a light touch of um, oil spray on top, just to assist it from not burning. So that goes straight into the oven with the pumpkin or butternut. That'll take around probably 20 minutes-ish to kind of heat through and should hopefully be ready by the time um, we, we get to serve the meal. Now, how are the onions going? Look at that, nice and soft, ready to commence the next lot of ingredients. Um, so we're gonna add some peanut butter and we're gonna be adding, I'm gonna make like a little mixture here. So we're gonna add around about three quarters of a cup of peanut butter. This is a lovely kind of peanutty stove. You could also use almond butter um, if you wanted to or any other butter you wanted or even tahini. That three quarters of a cup, that's about it. And then we're gonna put some near boiling or hot water in. So around about four cups. So this should um, add up totally to four cups. There we go. And two tablespoons of honey, just a bit of sweetness. And it's just kind of, I'm just gonna mix all the kind of the flavory ingredients in this one dish. It kind of will mean it will mix around nice and evenly. I'm gonna add some Thai red curry paste. Um, red curry paste and green curry paste are an excellent ingredient to keep in your pantry. So I'm gonna put in around about a tablespoon of that. 
and we're going to put in a little bit of salt, about half a teaspoon of salt. And it's going to mix this around. It doesn't have to be fully mixed. It will take quite a while to mix it, but we're just going to throw all this in at once. This is going to provide a really nice kind of a peanutty, kind of chili-ish kind of sauce. So just a quick mix there and put everything in with the onions. The peanut butter does look a little bit stringy at this stage, but when that kind of cooks through and mingles through, it'll, it'll go nice and creamy. So don't be too concerned if it doesn't look finished at this stage. So give it a bit of a stir through. Might just turn it up so it comes back up to the boil. And the next ingredient, we want three cups of cabbage. So we've got some, a nice white cabbage here. Just take off some of the outer leaves, they're a little dirty. And we're just gonna just slice it like that. And we're just gonna just slice it. So we're just gonna just finely slice it, kind of as fine as you can, but it doesn't have to be too kind of coleslaw-like. And when you're cutting, make sure you're sliding your knife nice through, nice long cuts. Try to cut the finger, and we'll just kind of go through twice like that. So you've kind of got stringy bits. And this is around about three cups, so it doesn't have to be too accurate. And this is going to kind of cook with all that lovely peanutty, oniony, garlicky, gingery flavour. So this is just going to provide a lovely base. Look at that. So this is a, tradition, a traditional Indonesian dish. Um, I think tradition you probably have it with chicken. We're going to be serving it with tofu today. And of course I've kind of, what I enjoy is actually taking a traditional dish that has like lots of unhealthy ingredients and actually transforming it and kind of reviving it so to speak. And just um, yeah, making a different version and that they still taste really, really good. You don't have to add lots of um, you know, dairy and meat and seafood and stuff to make a dish taste good. So that's kind of my greatest joy is transforming a dish. Mm, you can smell that peanut, it smells lovely. So when that comes to the boil, we'll turn it down. We don't want it to bubble too much. We just want it just kind of to heat through nicely. As you can see, that's starting to thicken up already. And um, yeah, that's a great start for our meal. We're underway. If you've just joined us on Cook 30, we are making an Indonesian Saya Loda Tofu Curry. We're gonna be serving it over cauliflower couscous with a delicious rocket almond and fig salad. And to finish, a lovely sweet peach and blueberry crumble. Now this couscous is something you probably haven't made before, and but I give it a go, it's really, really fun. So normally you sort of serve this dish on like a, a rice or a wheat couscous or something. But we're gonna make couscous out of the common cauliflower. So we're just gonna process this, get, the, get all the leaves off that we don't need. And this is so easy, you'll be, be amazed, and you'll want, to give it, you'll want to give this a go. So we'll just... So just take all the little leaves and bits out that you can't use. So you want to use one half of a large cauliflower, or a whole small cauliflower. So I'd determine this probably a small cauliflower, so we'll use all of this. And we've just got the S-blade in there, it's in the, in the food processor. So pick it up so it can at least get started, and pop it in there, and we're just going to blend that, simple as that. And as you can see, within a very short time, there's a little bit of a mix around, a help around, a few big bits in there, it becomes a really nice, fine, couscousy style dish. Okay, I think that's ready. So as you can see, we've got a lovely, kind of nice, fine, kind of couscousy texture there. Oh, better pull the blade out. And we're just going to empty that in there. You want to make sure you don't over mix it because it can go rather mushy. So just it only takes, you know, probably 10, 20 seconds max, depending on your um, food processor. I mean, look at that. That's just, just lovely. Okay, we're going to add some other ingredients. We're going to add a little bit of turmeric, just to give it a little bit of colour, just a little bit of, of yellowness happening. So probably about quarter of a teaspoon. 
I'm going to add some lemon, just to give it a little bit of extra zing. So squeeze it through my fingers. And um, the main thing that's going to make this really nice is some, some herbs. So we've got some fresh Italian parsley and some um, mint as well. And I keep my herbs in the fridge in a wet paper towel. It helps them become nice and um, keeps them nice and moist and fresh. So we're just going to chop this up relatively finely. Or roughly. And the mint as well. Mint, mmm, smells amazing. My favourite herb mint. Let's just give it some greenness and some freshness and some colour. And just a touch of olive oil. And I'm just going to mix this with my hands, just like mix it through. And this is just a lovely alternative to using rice or couscous. So you might have to mix it a bit so it doesn't go too clumpy. Might just add just a little bit more turmeric. Just to make it a bit more yellowy. And here we go. Oh, a bit of salt as well. So probably around about a quarter to half a teaspoon of salt. So it's just, yeah, something really different to have underneath the curry. I'm going to serve it on this one here. Just drop it, and when you're putting things on platters, just make, make sure you let gravity do the work. Sprinkle it on, don't kind of th throw it on or smooth it out, just, just a bit of a sprinkle like that. And from a distance, it actually looks like couscous. But it's a great, healthy, fresh alternative. Here we go. Another job done. Just give my hands a quick wash. And now we have another easy salad. Just wash the board. And this one here is even easier. Um, not that that was a salad, that's actually a side dish, but it could be a salad, I suppose. Oh, a bit of mint left off there. And this is just simply using some, just these ingredients here. So I've got some, um, get some really nice packets of these fresh lettuce from the supermarkets. So this is a kind of a regular and spinach, which is rocket mix. They just come like that, and they, they're normally pretty good. They usually come a little bit dry, so just a little bit of water, just in it, like about a tablespoon, just to give it a little bit of extra zing. This just kind of wakes the herbs up nicely. So we'll just put that in the bowl. So probably around about two to three cups. So you can use, this is yeah, spinach and rocket, but you could use any kind of combination you want. There's baby salad greens, there's lots of other ones you can use. And just simply throw some walnuts on top, some almonds, and the main ingredient of this is actually figs. If you can get dried, uh, fresh figs, that's even better, which is probably very difficult, but this one needs a knife, I think. But uh, dried figs are fine as well, and they just come like this. And we're just going to slice them, in the, and inside they've got this really beautiful texture. As you can see, they've got these lovely seeds, so we're just going to slice them in half, just to expose the lovely texture. If they're big, you can probably cut them a few times. Um, but they're just a lovely, sweet addition. Um, sometimes the ends of them can be quite hard, but these ones don't look too bad, so you may want to chop the little squiggly ends off. But um, yeah, I won't with these ones on this occasion. Just going to go through them all. So we're probably looking at around about what's this about a cup, a cup and a half. And again, with any salads, you know, there's no real rules about quantities. It's just about lots of different colours and flavours. Okay. And just to finish off, just another, just a drizzle of. I've got another half lemon here. Just a drizzle of lemon juice, just through it, just to give it a little bit of, just a little bit of tartness, just to just to tell you it's a salad. And that's another very simple thing that's ready for the table. Okay, the curry, look at that. Isn't that just coming along nicely? Smells lovely. If you love peanut butter, you're gonna love this dish. 
So we're going to put the final ingredients in. Uh, the first one is green beans. So just wipe my hands a little bit. This is a bit of a messy meal when it comes to hands. So just going to get some green beans and the lovely, throw out any that kind of aren't that fresh. Just line them up. We want to use a nice longness of the beans. So we're not going to chop them up into little bits because that would kind of waste the unique feature of beans. We're just going to just, just line them up and just cut the ends off and, um, and throw them in. Actually, I might do a few more. But you always want, or usually want something fresh and, and green in most dishes. So these will take a couple of minutes just to warm up in the curry. And tofu is a major ingredient. This is the protein source. And it normally comes with a bit of water, so you want to drain that out. And tofu has a reputation for being very bland and boring. But with all these flavours and peanutty gingerness in this curry, it's going to just make this tofu really sing with, with flavour. So this would be a great dish to try if you're new to tofu, for example. Don't be scared of it. Give things a try. So we're just going to chop it up into little cubes, probably one centimetre, half an inch thick. I'm just going to carefully put that in here. This is firm tofu. Um, extra firm might be better, but as long as you're gentle with it and add it at the end, it's going to stay together reasonably clearly in these kind of that kind of shape. And the finale ingredient which makes curries amazing is pumpkin or butternut, depending on which country you're from. And so we've got this out of the oven, and to test it, you just kind of want to put your finger through it and you want to make sure it's kind of soft like that. That's just all you need to do. And we're just going to spoon it into here. And because we've got the baking paper or the parchment paper, it's going to be an easy clean up job and less chance of it sticking to the bottom. Look at that. And it's not, it's um, good if you actually want to overcook your pumpkin because it actually kind of breaks off into kind of little kind of mushy bits and kind of adds to the texture of it as well. And when you look at these ingredients, you know this is going to be a fantastically flavoursome dish. So give everything a stir around. And just to kind of make this authentic saya loader, look, I'm probably not pronouncing it correctly, but that's kind of how it looks like it is. Just going to add a couple of tablespoons of coconut. And I'm going to add some coconut cream. And I find my can opener. And we're going to, going to use about maybe half a cup of coconut cream. We don't need much at all. But just a bit of coconutty kind of flavour just adds a bit of extra kind of creaminess to it. And don't, uh, sort of save a little bit of the coconut cream for a bit of a garnish when you serve it as well. It's always nice drizzled on top. Wonderful. And to finish this off, we'll just add some lovely fresh cilantro. Just to kind of give it a garnish. One thing, I want to I've got a bit of extra time today, so what I want to do is share with you just on, on knives. And one of the best things you can do with a knife is actually have it within the kitchen is have a really sharp knife. And most people in their kitchen have like, where I first started, had like, you know, 10 knives in their, in their drawer. You may have this too, different knives that are probably five to $10 knives. Whereas if you go out straight away and buy one really good chef's knife, you want one that's probably around about 20 centimeters or about eight inches. Um, you might pay $100 or $150 for one, but that will last probably your whole life of awesomely enjoyable, enjoyable cooking. And to keep it sharp, there's, um, there's, you want to basically sharpen it. And there's, there's two things to do, and you want to distinguish these. There's sharpening, and then there's brightening. So basically you can take any knife that's, kind of, that's not sharp, and you take it to a knife shop, and they'll grind the edge off and give you a new edge on your knife. That's sharpening. But when the kitchen at home, you're not actually sharpening, you're just brightening the knife. And using something like a steel, where you actually just align the metal parts in it to bring it back to sharpness. Um, and if you do this every time you cook, you'll keep your knife nice and bright and sharp. And if, probably every two to three, maybe four years, um, you may need to go and get a kind of a, a knife shop to give it a proper sharpen. So to sharpen, you get a steel like this, and it's really, really easy. It's not too hard. Just hold it up like this at 45 degrees, and you keep the steel still. You don't move this part. And all you do is just swipe your knife down the side like this, and probably 20 times a day is all you need to do this. Start off slow to get the action. Make sure you keep your fingers behind this bit in case your knife goes into there. And just, just lick it, just a few licks, perhaps 20, and that will just keep your knife nice and bright. 
That's all you need. Once it loses its edge, it may be hard to get it back using this type of technique, and you'll need to go to your knife shop and get a, get a really good edge put on it. And my test to find if a knife is actually working really well is the squash tomato test. So basically get a tomato and basically put the knife on top and, let, and pull it through, you letting gravity do the work. And as you can see, I'm not putting any pressure down, but that almost cuts that entire cherry tomato just with gravity. So you know you've got a sharp knife when you can do that. And you really enjoy your cooking when you're doing that. So I think the meals are ready now. The crumble will be ready in the oven and we're ready to eat. Look at that lovely crumble. So quick to make and you'll love it, it's very delicious. I hope you've learned some new tricks and skills and some ingredients you perhaps haven't used before today on Cook 30. You can try some of these at home. Eating healthy does not have to be difficult, so give them a go. Thank you for joining me today on Cook 30, and I look forward to seeing you next time.